है तुझे पता है आरा बाप कौन है है क्या चल रहा है फाइट इसमें तो बिजनेस है tonight on wwe Chadi Pelwan will be taking on Rowdy Macha. Hey, Rowdy Pelwan, you know who my father is? In 2019, Howard decided to include a full business case study of WWE. in the semester but only ended up enrolling 180 students now we will bring our full case study to each and every one of you and break down why the wwe became a 5 billion dollar company now let's go back to the roots wwe was actually founded in 1953 as the capital wrestling corporation from then till today wwe is now available in more than 1 billion homes worldwide in 30 languages see when i was younger i believed that the wwe which was called wwf back then was a real athletic contest i'm sure some of you believe that as well i truly believed that the undertaker really was dead and that the fights that took place in the ring were real the wwf at this point always maintained that their fights were real but all of that changed in 1989 when the owner Vince McMahon publicly announced that they were staged in order to avoid taxes from athletic commissions you see some states in the US have different regulations and taxes that apply to athletic events if you are running a competition for example in new jersey there was a 3% athletic tax imposed on such events such a tax did not apply to non athletic events In 1989, the WWF was going to have its WrestleMania, its main event in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Donald Trump, who was a friend of McMahon, estimated that there could be a lot of tax savings in not being classified as a sport or a true sport. So the WWE confessed that the matches that we hold are indeed staged, the results are indeed predetermined, and therefore we are not an athletic event this confession allowed them to avoid the tax on athletic events as well as other regulations associated with athletic contests like drug tests today they call it sports entertainment a clever way to avoid athletic body taxes while still confusing the average viewer into thinking that it is sports you see many businesses that we have spoken about here on avtv are run by a strong core team with founders giving away stock liberally to those who can grow and help them manage the business but not WWE Vince McMahon runs the company like a dictator and he still retains a 38.6 ownership of the company and has 81.1% of the voting power almost every decision until the last one or two years had still run by him which is the winners of the contest creative control even the stadium electricity bills had to be reviewed by him in fact the family of mcmans all had this trait what people don't realize is there were two generations of mcmans a father and a son the younger mcman bought the core company from his father in 1982 and seized control in fact of the company the deal between the two mcmans was a monthly payment basis where if a single payment was missed by the younger mcman ownership would return to the older mcman The younger Vince McMahon in order to pay off this monthly settlement took several loans and deals with other promoters and business partners in order to take full ownership. So back when most wrestling fights didn't happen on TV, they happened live in a building or in a stadium. There was a territory system in America with over 30 promoters running their own wrestling territory and no promoter from a different territory was allowed into a promoter's territory. So if you ran a territory it's like your own small kingdom right and if somebody else comes in it's like a gang war but Vince McMahon said screw this and decided to go straight to television if you are on TV it doesn't matter what state you are going to conduct your events in it's going to all of America WWE's major success in fact was built on a change event what we call inflection points which was the rise of cable TV <laughs>
three days later. And as you'll see on many of our business case studies, the biggest businesses in the world were built on inflection points, where the world changes in a significant way. Cable TV was a big change. A recent inflection point was the rise of mobile phones, which created many, many apps which were billion dollar businesses. Or Jio in India, that led to an explosion of content like Hotstar and Netflix. Every time an inflection point arrives, you have the opportunity to build a big business. Vince understood this and was also very ambitious from a young age. He wanted to not just dominate America, he wanted to take his wrestling business to the world. To further weaken competition, he started buying out wrestlers from competitors, from the other small kingdoms that I spoke about, by offering them nice packages. It reminds me of the battle between Allen and Unacademy. The similarity between coaching centers and WWE is their entire business is built on the concept of stars. In fact, Mr. McMahon called them attractions. These are people that the crowd really loves to watch and will be willing to pay for. He understood that the audience came to see some of these stars instead of the brand itself. There was no loyalty to the brand, there was no loyalty to any of these small wrestling kingdoms, but there was loyalty to Hulk Hogan, there was loyalty to The Undertaker. So what he started doing later was to invent these stars. What he'd do is he'd pick up some burly looking guy, some big strong guy, give him a funny or serious name, come up with a story behind him. Well, you are a dead person, you give him a story and promote the life out of that guy with that story. It is said that if you repeat something hundreds of times, it becomes true. And on screen, Vince McMahon would make that character behave exactly the same without breaking his on-screen character. In the wrestling world, this consistent portrayal of fake events or fake stories or fake backstories as true was known as kayfabe. A wrestler breaking kayfabe or breaking his story during a show is almost like an actor breaking his character on camera. Kayfabe is only occasionally broken during shows, usually when dealing with genuine injuries during a match or paying tribute to you know retired or dead wrestlers. The term kayfabe was often used as a warning to other wrestlers that someone who was not in the know was in the vicinity. As I told you, for a very long time, people did not know that WWE was scripted. It was just a few people, the wrestlers themselves and the script writers, who knew that the results and the match was predetermined. This could include even the wrestlers' family members who had not been clued into the scripted nature of professional wrestling. Kayfabe was fiercely maintained for decades but with the advent of the internet, it's very hard to hide something on the internet. Today, the wrestlers have become less concerned with protecting their so-called backstage secrets and typically maintain kayfabe only during the shows. We interrupt the segment to bring you something very important. Skilllink is one of India's largest engineering learning platforms. It bridges the growing gap between academia and industry for students, early stage professionals and job seekers. Skilllink offers programs across engineering domains like mechanical, civil, electrical, CSE and much more. They also have a brilliant course on emerging technologies like electrical vehicles, data science, autonomous vehicles, machine learning, embedded engineering, high-rise buildings, design engineering, and conversational AI. The world-class curriculum is developed by industry experts and they have curriculum partnerships for course design and software access with organizations like Renault Nissan, Bentley Systems, and much more. All their programs are specially designed to focus on project-based learning so that individuals can work on industry-relevant projects, gain practical knowledge, and also build a strong project portfolio. To make your learning experience smooth, Skilllink provides live technical support and also has top-notch dedicated customer success team for placements. They presently have 2000 plus job offers, 300 plus partner recruiting companies and 15,000 plus active learners. If you want to make your dream job in a core company come true, check out the link in the video description. You can also avail an exclusive 15% offer and a free career guidance session by registering to the link below. And now, back to the video. Vince McMahon also experimented with these characters that he was inventing to get the story right, realizing that the audience has a very short memory. For example, there is a wrestler called Matt Bloom that has played a character called Prince Albert, then changed the character to Albert, 
then became A Train, and finally he played an Asian character called Tensai. It takes time to get the character right, and because the audience keeps easily forgetting who the character is unless they become very popular, and the minute they become very popular, they're a hit. Next. Next. Ah. Perfect. WWE itself was a very exhausting process. Every week the wrestlers would travel from city to city and every single week they would perform. They've now done this for 60 plus years. The events would end at WrestleMania. which was a mega event and it was a culmination of the year's events to encourage wide viewership for wrestlemania mr mcmahon would bring superstars like snoop dog like muhammad ali and many singers famous people outside of the wwe sphere now in 1992 something strange but still obvious happened the wwe called the wwf back then was hit with allegations of steroid abuse which severely hit revenues because the brand took a hit A rival competition called WCW started stealing their wrestlers despite the same wrestlers abusing the steroids. Hulk Hogan for example, who Mr. McMahon had spent time and energy making famous, went to WCW and continued to use the same name brand. This angered Mr. McMahon, and that is also when he realized that he couldn't allow the wrestlers to continue using their stage name outside the WWE. He started creating contracts where he, which is McMahon, owned the name rights to the character. So if you got famous in the WWE, it would be hard for you to go out and get the same attention. Big Show, for example, is actually named Paul White, but absolutely nobody knows him by that name. If a competitor steals Big Show, it's almost like Big Show is starting his brand from scratch because they have to come up with a new name for him. Paul White isn't as exciting as Big Show because nobody knows Paul White. Now, WCW and WWE went head to head for ratings and the competition heated up on cable TV, causing both brand values to surge. WWF at that time, realizing that the audience wanted a more authentic product, transformed itself from a family-friendly product into a more adult-oriented product. They started using swear words, showing chair shots, showing blood and made it seem more real. Hey, views nahi aa rahi re. Thoda maar. Thoda views aa rahi re. Maar. Hey. Views aa rahi re. Maar. काफी व्यूज आ रहे थे मॉडल व्यूज मिस्टर मिकमैन who was himself facing a pr crisis for being known as a bad person in the industry assumed the character of a villain himself he said well if pr or press is going to call me bad i'm going to own it i'm going to be the bad guy on this show and play that bad character in march 2001 Vince McMahon acquired the rights to WCW's trademarks, characters, contracts and all other properties from Time Warner for around 7 million dollars and he ended up becoming the wrestling monopoly. In 2002, after losing a trademark war with World Wildlife Fund, they changed their name to WWE, which is World Wrestling Entertainment. In March 2002, WWE decided to increase the volume of shows being produced and decided to create two separate rosters which each group of wrestlers appearing on one of their main programs either Raw or SmackDown due to the overabundance of talent that came over from WCW like i told you he couldn't make people wait 7 full days for the next event so he increased volume just like we do two videos a week and that improves growth in 2004 They shut down the authenticity because they had become a monopoly and became more family friendly to reach a wider audience. Now, here are some lessons that I have learned that are useful in any media business and many of these lessons we use in ABTV as well. If you can figure out which ones we use, comment below and I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. Number 1, the dynamic of villains which are known as heels 
and heroes which in the WWE industry are known as faces and the constant switching depending on what the audience wants if the audience boos you McMahon forced you to be booed even more feed off the audience basically one more interesting thing is that as you know in the WWE all of these words these industry specific words were internal lingo and we at AVTV also have a lot of internal lingo number 2 entrances mcmahon realized that entrances were a power play when a character comes out in an entrance with a song playing it feels good to the audience it gets an emotional rise of the audience at wrestlemania he utilized entrances like a ceremony and also these sudden entrances where somebody is speaking and suddenly somebody comes out to their song it adds an interesting dynamic he would purposely give wrestlers 3 to 4 months off if the audience got bored of them and then return them when the heat had cleared with a big entrance the audience would always cheer even if in the past they booed for that character this was called a pop again internal lingo several months later number 3 promotions he realized that fights are interesting only if they are hyped just like our community posts if we hype something before it happens it has a higher chance of not just being viewed but viewed with interest tanmay bird also does this very often but in every video he talks about a special video that's going to be released for example his vlog 100 similarly wwe uses the idea of promotions where in many episodes they build up to one specific event usually one of their pay per view events for example wrestlemania number 4 family friendliness as they scale they needed a wider audience known as the target addressable market or tam they need to increase this tam but parents wouldn't allow their kids to watch a show with bad words and blood so they made it family friendly by removing all of that most blood in wwe is not real it comes by a process called blading where a character would use a small blade to make a tiny nick in their skin that would bleed profusely Lastly, he understood that in order to make a new wrestler popular, he had to make the other wrestlers they were facing seem like the new wrestler was a formidable threat. So they would lose or get beat on purpose to the new wrestler. When retiring for example, an aged wrestler would almost always lose in their retirement match to put the other person over and give the winner's brand a big boost. It is not a good way to retire by losing. It doesn't make sense. but it was the wwe tradition in my last fight i want to go out on a loss and help the new guy get a brand boost <laughs>